Hey, what is going on guys? As always, it is awesome to see you again. Today, I have a video about one of the most common mistakes that I hear English students make. Prepositions. Prepositions are really difficult. There are tons and tons of different rules that you need to know, and it's way too much to cover in one video. So today, we are gonna focus on the time prepositions in, on, at, and for. By the end of this lesson, you should understand how to use these prepositions and it will help your English speaking a lot. Let's get started. Okay, so these four prepositions have other definitions when they are talking about other things like place. But today, we're going to talk about how these relate to time. First, let's talk about when you want to use in. Use in for two situations. The first one is when you're talking about months, seasons, years, or long periods of time, like all those examples. I will visit Japan in March. I will visit Japan in the spring. He was born in 1997. He was born in the 1990s. The second way you can use in is when you are talking about a time in the future measured from right now. Like that first example, I will finish work in 30 minutes. Right now, where I am, it is 10.15 p.m. If I said, I will finish work in 30 minutes, that means that I will finish work at 10.45 p.m. Because that is 30 minutes from right now. That second example, I will move to Los Angeles in four months. So now it's April. This sentence would mean that I will move to Los Angeles in August. You want to use on for days. This can be either the name of a day, like Friday, Saturday, Thursday, or a specific date, like August 9th or July 12th. You can also use on for parts of a day. He is off work on Thursday. The meeting will be on March 22nd. Those are both days. I will see my grandparents on Christmas. Here, Christmas is the specific name of a day, so that is okay. I will go to the gym on Friday afternoon. Next, at is the most specific of these three. You want to use at for specific exact times. I'll meet you at noon. The game starts at 7.15. For is a little bit different. You want to use for when you're talking about a length of time, how long something happens. Today, I have to work for eight hours. So maybe you start work at 11 a.m. and finish at 7 p.m. I have been studying English for six months. So this would mean that six months ago, you started studying English. He's been asleep for about 40 minutes. And then these are just kind of random in the morning, in the afternoon, in the evening, at night. I don't know why we use in for the first three and at for night. English is weird. Let's do a little bit of practice. For each of the blanks below, add in, on, at, or for. You'll use in twice, but the rest of them you'll only use once.
Okay, here are your answers. I go to yoga class on Tuesdays because Tuesday is a day. I will graduate from university in 2021. That's a year. I will pick my kids up from school at 3.30. That is a time. I will start my English class in 20 minutes, 20 minutes into the future. The class usually lasts for about an hour. That is how long the class is for. Here is a bonus tip. You can use around and about for an estimate of time, a guess, not an exact time. For example, the game starts at 7.15. This sentence means that the game will start exactly at 7.15. If I said the game starts around 7.15, this means it will start close to 7.15. It might start at 7.10, it might start at 7.20, but it will be close to the time 7.15. If I said I will move to Los Angeles in four months, that means, you know, pretty much exactly four months. But if I move in about four months, maybe it will be three and a half months, maybe four and a half months. I don't know yet. Last bonus tip. You can use last or next with a day of the week, season, month, or year and these will replace the preposition. For example, I will move to Las Vegas next year. You don't need to add in because next replaces in. I will start college next fall. Same thing, you don't need in. I quit my job last Friday. You don't need on. I got married last April. Here we do not need in. Hopefully that makes sense. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope this helps you. I hope you understand how you can use these prepositions now. If you have any questions, you can always write them in the comments. I will do my best to answer. Keep studying hard, stay motivated, you can do it. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video.